Hey, this is God's Comic, Brad Stein, and this is part two of my interview with Eric Metaxas. Uh, the first half was fun, uh, where we got to be funny, and Eric got to show his, the lighter side of his brilliance, and he is a brilliant guy and uh, very funny. Uh, the second part uh, begins to go off where we left off the first part. Unfortunately, it goes into a little bit more deeper, more dangerous, more uh, uncomfortable um, parts of what we were observing, which is the fact that Germany in 1939, before Hitler's rise, um, is very similar, unfortunately, to where America is today. A guy that wrote Bonhoeffer would see those parallels more than a lot of people and be more qualified to comment on them. And that's kind of what we're dealing with. So um, enjoy the uh, integrity of the interview and the spontaneity of it and the organic feel of it. But buckle up, it ain't pretty. You're not giving me parameters. But it seems to me that we can just cut all that out and ask it to me. It's again. too late. Short yeah, no, it's much too late. So I'll just use it and shame you on YouTube. Um, <laughs> You're horrible. But you know, we used to leave as a legacy the Sistine Chapel, the Pieta. Yeah. That's represented us. Now we do puppet shows. Right. You know, and uh, and very, you know, poorly made, oftentimes faith films. Right. I believe that. Nothing more affects our culture than the media. That is what is raising our kids. That is what is creating perception. That is what is essentially establishing what is true about America. It's false. Yeah. It's manipulated. It's and 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 it's very postmodern, deconstructive of of Christian worldview. But it's who we are now. Yeah. Um, do you see this as a speaking of watershed? Um, our turn for oppression to follow our brothers in North Korea and China and Middle East and so forth. I mean, do you think it's that serious? Because I think a lot of Christians don't. Yeah. Well, now you're you've you've skipped to an, uh, another topic, uh, an even more depressing topic. Yes. If I can if I can say that. Um, just just back to the culture for one right. second. Right. Um, I think Christians are beginning to get this idea that it's the culture, right? Mm -hmm. It's the you know if I could make up a T-shirt, be it's the culture, stupid, because you know you can elect politicians. Well, let, let, let's for another historical lesson. Thirty something years ago, Christians figured out you know what maybe we should be involved in politics, and guess what? That was correct. We should yeah. be involved in politics, but if that's all you're involved in, you're in big trouble because we are supposed. Excuse me, we're supposed to see that, that chili pepper. Yeah, uh, we are supposed to be involved. In everything, in mm -hmm. everything. So in culture, we're supposed right. to be involved in culture. So if you turn on the TV, there should be Christians out there. And I don't right. mean just talking about God stuff, but I'm saying people with a Christian worldview, people um, with Christian sensibility. We, we've retreated from culture, and we're paying the price. And part of this gets to what you were just saying, is that we've allowed ourselves to be marginalized. Right. So that people really don't uh, take what we have to say seriously. They just think it's just a, it's a fringe point of view. Yeah. Uh, and so so who cares about it? And so I do think we've come to a place where we're not really, how do I put this? We don't really have people uh, in the culture representing the biblical point of view and so on and so forth. And so I think we are in danger of being, it's like you're 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 in a game. There, there's a soccer game, but you've got no guys on the field, so they keep scoring goals on you, and it's because you don't even have anybody on the field. Mm -hmm. If you had a couple guys on the field, yeah. you might you might have have a shot. Um, actually, to switch metaphors, I'll look at it this way: think of it as a war. I have said many times that it's as if we're fighting a war with no air cover. The culture is the air cover. Now, stick with me on this. Um, you can elect Christian politicians, um, but if you do not have in the culture, on the TV, in, in the world of media, um, people representing some kind of Christian worldview, and I'm not talking about hot-headed, uh, uh, you know, hyper-conservative, I'm, I'm just talking about a biblical worldview. If you don't have anybody in the culture putting those ideas out, then when you're talking about legislation or you're talking about any of these other things, you're you're going to lose the battle because the arguments that need to be out there they're not they're not even out there. Mm -hmm. So it's like fighting a war. You've got more tanks, more troops, but you don't have a plane in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's really the metaphor. And the 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 air cover is the culture, the magazines, 
the TV programs, the sitcoms. Think of, is there a sitcom that comes from kind of a Christian point of view? Now, there's so many millions of Christians in America, so obviously, if you think of the free market, it's going to deliver up some sitcoms coming from a biblical point of view, where sex outside of marriage is frowned upon, and blah, 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 blah. I can't think of one. So, how is it possible that in the United States of America, we don't have any voice in the culture? I mean, obviously, you, you have... Um, you know, every kind of uh, other point of view being represented, but our point of view isn't there because we've been out of the game for decades. We haven't been, we haven't encouraged our young people to go to Hollywood because if you go to yeah. Hollywood, you lose your faith. So, uh, now that's the long answer to your question. If you'd like the short answer, I can also give you the short answer. Well, I'm curious though, and this sounds Christianese, but yet, you know, if we take this seriously, I guess we have to bring this up. Um, part of this has to be a spiritual dimension of battle. Yeah. Part of it has to say Satan doesn't want us to get our story told because it's, it's dangerous to him. But Correct. How, how can we convince uh, the gatekeepers of media who... For by and large are not believers, yeah. certainly have no moral convictions that are similar to ours, to believe that it is relevant or in some ways has um, a value that they should tap into. Is there a monetary <laughs> uh, strategy? There's money here. I mean, isn't that what they're trying to do with faith films is say, yeah. is say yeah. you can make money here. There's yeah. more money in G films than right. our films. You know, I mean, where... Where, where do we balance the spiritual element that we can't control, that is our fight, right. and how much we are allowed to engage culture, I mean, in, in, a, um, in a passionate, righteous drive? When does it cross the line and suddenly perhaps isn't the way Jesus would have done it? I mean, that seems to be sometimes tricky. You know, when are we pushing too hard and right. trying to secularize our methods? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. N not to me, it doesn't make no, sense. No, and I didn't mean it to there. you. I was speaking to the guy next door, but he um, hasn't responded the, yet. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer to that. I honestly, I don't have an answer to that. I think that it is complicated. Then why did I ask? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But I think there is a spiritual element to it. That, that, let's, let's be honest. If folks like you uh, or me had a presence in the mainstream media and a voice... We would be able to say things that people aren't saying. It would resonate with millions of people who are already sort of thinking that way and who are looking for somebody to say those things. Um, if you believe in a spiritual dimension, that would be really threatening to the other side. Let's face it, that's going to be way more damaging than electing one more born-again congressman. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so... I do think it's a spiritual element. I think that we're just going to continue to pray and be faithful and trust that God has a plan. I believe He does. I really do. Hmm. Can you turn that off? Put I that right in the middle. Could. Yeah. Let me turn. Uh, I don't think it's that. I think it's that middle one. Thank you. And then you got to turn the other one on the left back to the left. There you go. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, he's also my grip. <laughs> I, I think I just called myself a cab. Yes, with the exactly. other button I pressed. Yeah. Well, you know, I have been speaking as a comic about worldview, about um, sort of standing up for principles that I believe the founding fathers certainly believed in. I mean, mm -hmm. there's constant two sides to that story. We have uh, wall builders and David Barton, who's yeah. very much about the, the original tent of the Five Fighters. Yeah. They're yeah. very much driven by Judeo-Christian ethic. We certainly know that the pilgrims came to uh, to escape religious oppression. That's documented. Uh, uh, the Mayflower Compact couldn't be more Christian. Um, but, um, I, you know... Then there's there's an element of natural law that well, that could lead to more of a esoteric look at at, at who God really is, and then the people want to call Jefferson a deist, which he must have not have been a good one because he wanted there to be prayer. So you wouldn't. You know, By the way, for for a dumb guy, you sound very intellectual. I just want you to know that. You, well, I'll have to put an end to that. Yeah.
Um, <laughs> so what I'm curious about then uh, is, you know, um, the founding fathers, the, the, our principles, our standards. Um, I don't know that I don't know how we can can lose the fact that it was Christian, that there was a Christian through line, well, even if they weren't yeah. necessarily evangelical or whatever we would right. call that, right. you know, right. they, they certainly use that as a template for moral absolutes. It wasn't Islam, it was Christian. Actually, if you read Os Guinness's new book, it's called A Free People's Suicide, which is called... I, I don't have access to that because I don't know Os Guinness like you do, Mr. Metaxas. Really? Uh, well... All, Mr. Name Dropper. All, all, all you have to do is, is go to Amazon.com. I see. And, oh, it's a buy. You don't really have. Oh, you don't actually, know me. This is one of those weird books where you don't actually have to know the author personally to order it. That's yeah, odd. That's, that's the great okay. thing about this book. You, you don't even have to know us personally. Interesting. But the book is called A Free People's Suicide. And he talks about a lot of the things that you just mentioned. And the idea that I guess we've had religious freedom in this country. People don't even know what that is. For so long that we take it for granted, we don't even know what it is. Yeah. And he talks about the idea that. If you don't have religious freedom, in other words, if you do not have the freedom to uh, be, in, the, in this case and in our case, to be a Christian mm -hmm. in, in America, uh, it's, not just, it's not just a religious issue. It, it affects the whole republic. It affects the whole American experiment. You, you, I would go so far as to say that you cannot have America for very long. America will die if you do not have religious freedom. And so when religious freedom is threatened, like with this HHS mandate thing, every American should know this is a threat to the United States mm -hmm. of America. Forget about Catholics, forget mm -hmm. about contraception, contraception. It is about yeah. America. Yeah. And if you do not realize that this is a threat to you and yeah. to America, and frankly to the whole world, because yeah. America is the light of the world. I mean, America is this, this country that has, has offered hope for the world but that comes out of this this Christian faith that we yeah. go anyway. We're, they we're talking about so many different things, but the point is that um, in the in Oz's book, he talks about a lot of these things, and he talks about the fragility of the um, the American experiment. And we kind of think like, well, it'll always continue. No, it's very fragile, and mm -hmm. it is right now being threatened. Mm -hmm. And when religious liberty is threatened, uh, America cannot be the beacon of the world because. Uh, <laughs> We're, we're, I guess I think of I think of my parents. They came to this nation from Europe. They thought America is, is offers hope. It offers me freedom. It offers me opportunity. If I work hard, uh, e even I who who have no education, if I work hard, I can buy a house and I can send my kid to college and and maybe he'll go to a, a good college if he studies hard. And I went to Yale University and and you know all these hopes that people around the world have looked to this the, to this nation, it, it didn't just come out of a vacuum. It's not yeah. just because this is a, a great continent that we live right. on. It comes out of ideas that are yeah. fundamentally biblical right. ideas. And I know that uh, genuinely those ideas are, are being threatened right now. And um, I, I, I don't know, I mean, there's a lot to say on that, but, but people need to, to know that this is, this is actually serious. Yeah. Can we be serious? Yeah. No, well, it is serious and it's important. Um, you know, What limitations do we have to put? Do Christians, you know, have to put on themselves when it comes to defending ourselves? I mean, you wrote this amazing book, Bonhoeffer. Uh, he was was an amazing Christian man, an incredibly articulate, intelligent, intellectual, academic theologian, committed to his faith, committed to Christ and would have pulled the trigger and blown the brains out of Adolf Hitler. How does he justify that? How, what is that a just law theory? Show me Well, it's kind of like, you know, I talk about this a lot when I'm speaking about Bonhoeffer, which is constantly around the country and people ask me that question and I I I think first of all you have to to realize that Bonhoeffer he was not gleeful about the idea of having to resort to violence. So when people say like, "Yeah, I want to put a bullet in, you know, Hitler's head or whatever." The flesh, you know, yeah. carnal uh, desires to, to do that, are, that does not honor God. Bonhoeffer was very sober and very prayerful and, and probably very sad in a way that, that he was forced to be involved in a conspiracy 
to end the life of the head of the state. So this is not something I think that he was gleeful about. But I think that, you know, scripturally, you know, David killed Goliath, and we don't say, well, but then yeah. he repented. Yeah. When, when uh, he kills Uriah the Hittite, effectively, that is clearly sin, that's murder, and he repents. Um, this is something different. And, and to kill Adolf Hitler, um, you know, I think Hitler was the architect of, uh, of such evil. And Bonhoeffer knew enough that he knew that if, if we don't stop Hitler himself, this will continue. It's very complicated. That's why I always hope people read the book, kind of get the nuance, because it's, it's, not, just, it's not just like getting a gun to kill one guy. Right. But at the end of the day, that was part of, of the, the plan, that, that if we don't kill him and his top lieutenants, the not national socialism will continue, and it'll even be maybe take more virulent forms, even without Hitler. Right. <clears throat> well, it's really easy for us now to look back at Germany and 39 and seem like we saw the writing on the wall and why didn't they see this yeah. and why wasn't this obvious and why didn't it be stopped and in retrospect to think we've learned a wonderful lesson and look at these wonderful monuments we put up to the Holocaust and aren't we wonderful people now like we learned a lesson right how close do you think America is yeah to where they were right in their absolute naivete to what was happening right. and and how do we how do we get to a place yeah. how can we be that stupid yeah. in a nation yeah. this smart well this is i mean this is the case if and any time i have brung up brung up brought up excuse me <laughs> uh, any time i uh, have brought up the idea the parallels to the third right people immediately and this is because 